but one of the neatest things was, and, and the locker room is similar to this setup. I mean, they're not going to let you sit in Sam Bradford's locker, Callum Clinton. They're just not. They're not going to do that. So they had tables and chairs set up, and he had stations in front of people's lockers. And uh, mine was right in front of Sam. So we come off the practice field one day, and I'm sitting in my locker, messing my cleats and shoes, and I turn around, and Bradford is just standing right there, and it was, I mean, just as cool, and we had a conversation with him, and it, it was one of those things. I think, especially for me, coming from humble beginnings like this, coming from a place like this. There's a certain gap that I, I think people just put on the NFL or put like when you have a dream, there's a lot of people that there's, there seems to be a big gap in getting there. And one of the things that I'm so fortunate to, to have experienced is I've, I've played with guys at Abilene Christian that have they're playing five years in the NFL. I, I went to an NFL mini camp and I'm still playing football in the CFL. And so one of the biggest things for me was that it doesn't matter what the out the outside expectations or limitations that people say that you that make make it such a far outreach goal, and that's that's one of the things that I'm so grateful and humble to have experienced is the fact that I my hard work and having good teammates and the Lord's blessing along the way, and that's that's why I'm I'm where I'm at right now, and I'm I'm so thankful and appreciative for that. Um, so I, I didn't I didn't get a contract or invited to training camp with the Rams. And so, but after that, I went to a mini, uh, training camp in Toronto with the Toronto Argonauts. Uh, performed well. Uh, eventually signed a three-year contract. And then uh, I come back home for a while, and I start researching everything I can about Canadian life and how different and drastic it is and how uh, one, one of the biggest things that Americans and Canadians with the TIFF is we call them our little brother up there. We, we like to we like to give, give them a little riff every now and then, tell them that they're our little brother and we like to take care of them. And they, they don't appreciate that very much. But uh, I, I went up there in May, went to training camp, and then our, we had two preseason games in June. We get, I got up there May 28th and our first preseason game was June 11th. And to get into some of the differences between the style of plays, there are 12 players instead of 11 on either side of the ball. Down south here, the field is like 52 and a third yards wide. Up there, it's 65. From goal line to goal line down here, it's 100 yards. Down there, up there, it's 110. And the the end zones are, are 20 yards long on either either side in the CFL. And the goal posts are at the front of the end zone. And so schematically, it's a little, it's a little, you're gonna have to work your way around the field a little differently because of a, a, a field a throw from the left hash to this sideline used to be like a 35-yard throw. Well, now it's like 45. It's, it's, it's a 50-yard throw to get the ball out there. And so there, there are just certain little nuances that are different. Um, up here, there's a 40-second play clock. In Canada, there's a 20-second play clock. Instead of getting four downs, you only get three downs. Uh, so it, it, it makes for an exciting, up-tempo style play, which is a quarterback. I mean, that's, that's what, especially for me, that's what I, that's what I enjoy. You know, I, I enjoy the pressure of the situation because it might be first down, but in American terms, it's really second down. And then your second down is third down. And so, I mean, it, it makes for a, a pressurized situation every time that you, you uh, get the ball. And so you have to be efficient. You have to, you have to be prepared. You have to know what you're doing. And, and so for me, it was a great experience for me to go into this last year and to get my feet wet in, into something different, into something exciting. I got to learn from a guy, his name's Ricky Ray. He just finished his 11th year in the CFL. He, uh, I think his top five uh, completion percentage games were like 95, 88, 87, 86, and 82%. I mean, he, he, he's an efficient guy, so it, it was a great experience for me to get to learn from him and, and to get to see how it's supposed to be done. The preparation that he puts into it, which are things that I learned at Abilene Christian. But I think every time you make a step in life or in your in your career in your craft, things get a little more dramatic. Th things get a little more serious, and and so for me it was it was something that I absolutely enjoyed. Um, and it, it, one of the coolest things throughout this whole experience, throughout this, the past nine or ten months or years since I've been up in Canada. Is, I mean, I, I, my brother and I, we literally used to play in the street when mom and dad's car were in the driveway. Like, we, we had to play in the street. And it was, so going from that and in my college career, playing in Cowboy Stadium twice and going to Canada and playing in front of 35, 45,000 people. I mean, it's, it's one of the coolest experiences that I've, I've had the pleasure to enjoy. And uh, so I'm just, I'm extremely thankful. And so it's, it's 
it's important for me to come back to I mean I could be in Dallas working out I could be in Arizona working I could be anywhere working out but I wanted to be here because this is where it started for me I mean this is where this is where my foundation was laid this is this is absolutely home for me and I'm I'm so appreciative and, and thankful to be from this area if, if any of y'all have any questions for me I'll field them as best I can is it cold up there? Right now, it's freezing cold. <laughs> Actually, I, I misspoke. It's it's below freezing cold right now. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, do you go on third down quite often? Uh, it, it's situational. It really is. Um, one of the other differences that I forgot to mention was the defensive line has to give you a yard off the ball. So, I mean, you have a yard off the ball. So, if it's second and one, they just – what happens a lot is the quarterback sneak it. It's a quarterback sneak because they're yard off the ball. Hopefully, with the yard leverage, we can get a first down. Um, but it, it's definitely situational as far as when you go for it on third down. I mean, if you have, to, if it's third and game and you have to, definitely. Um, if you're trying to put somebody away and you think you can get it, then sure. Uh, but it's one of those things that's kind of relative to situation. Uh, yes, sir. The uh, our offensive coordinator calls it. We have a especially the system that we run. It's kind of a West Coast oriented system. Mark Tressman, who's the the head coach for the Chicago Bears, he was the head coach for the Montreal Alouettes, and our head coach Scott Milanovic was his offensive coordinator. And he, and so Tressman, he's the one he took the West Coast to Canada. And he, I mean, he he's really a scientist when it comes to offense, and he implemented it for the Canadian style. And so it's kind of a complex system. I mean, there are a lot of nuances and little things that go into it that, that need to make it work, and so I'm glad that he's the one that calls the play. How often do your parents come up and see you play? They, uh, they made one trip up last, last year. I think it was right around the second or third week of July. They, uh, and Tyson Tyson got to go up there and experience it. And it was pretty cool for them to, to come up there and, and see it. Toronto, Toronto, the city I'm in, it's a neat city. It really, and there's lots of things to do, and it's a lot different than Alba, Oklahoma. Are you aware they have an interesting player right there? Oh yes, very much so. Very, yeah, I, I've, I've heard about the guy. What's funny is the the morning of one of our our, our practice week, the morning of the, one of our practices was his infamous he, his uh, press conference where he used some choice words and talked about things that had been said about him. And well, he's wearing an Argonauts jersey. <laughs> And so, so we get off the practice field, and our, our coach, he, he's addressing the team, and he comes up to us, and he says, he says, guys, he goes, I don't know, none of you guys know about it, but our mayor decided to have a press conference this morning wearing Argonauts jersey, and he said some things that you probably just better not say him. And he said, if you get asked about it, just decline all comment. Just, <laughs> just, just decline all comment. So, and so it's funny, we... It comes to the game. It's that Sunday. It's, it comes to the game, and after the game, people are talking. Well, he showed up at halftime. Oh, wow. We were winning at halftime, and then we ended up getting beat. So he shows up at halftime, and people start booing him and throwing beer bottles at him. And, uh, it was uh, it was it was a quite a catastrophe for, for him. But yes, I've, I've definitely had a lot of conversations about him. <laughs> Never have met the guy. How many teams compose these? There are nine teams now. There were eight, but Ottawa just got their team back. So there are going to be nine teams right now. So you play from one end of Canada? Yes, sir. The, the, way, that, the way that the CFL is split up is split up in the east and west divisions. Um, they're, they're doing some realignment stuff right now. But on the east, for the eight teams, the east was composed of Montreal, Toronto, Winnipeg, and Hamilton. And then the West was composed of British Columbia, Calgary, Edmonton, and Saskatchewan. And so now I, I'm not sure how exactly they're going to reconfigure the whole the whole league, but that that's how it was comprised last year. So the, does the running game kind of take a back seat in Canadian football? I mean, it it does, but it doesn't lose its importance. If you can run the ball, it's almost that much more in, important because it makes you that much more dynamic. I mean, we've. I think in, in 2012, the, the Argonauts, they won the Grey Cup. They won, they won the championship. And I think in that game, the running back ran for like 195 yards. And so it's, I mean, it's just like any other game. It's relative to, to game plan and to scheme and what the defense is, is throwing at you. Um, but because the passing game is, so, is, is such a big part of the game, I think that makes the running game that much more important if you can do it effectively. 
potential? Is that a 12th player? Is that a floater, or they have a designated position? They, they have a designated – say say they're running a 4-3. So they have four down linemen and then three linebackers. They have two corners and then a safety. Well, the other two players are called halfbacks, and they're like safety-linebacker hybrids. They they can play coverage, but then they can play the run. They can cover, you know, big inside receivers. And and so, I mean, really, it, 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 it almost becomes a wash because, yes, they can get into different – like say they're running the cover two. Well, they can get a guy – into a zone in a cover two scheme that normally you can't get. That they can cover an area that normally you can't cover. But since we also have a 12th guy, our route concepts, we can get to an area that normally you can't get to as well. And so it, it definitely becomes this back and forth kind of, we'll give you this to take this kind of thing. Um, but the, there, there's some big window because the field is 65 yards wide. And there's some big windows. I mean, if you're on the left hash, I mean, that's like, like I said before, that's like a 50 yard throw. And so, you, you very often, very very few times does does the field get thrown to like you don't make, draw a whole lot of concepts for the field. Usually, you kind of split it into like two thirds of the field, and, and you work that area. But every now and then, I mean, I, I was I was talking to Miss Melton earlier, and uh, there's a there's a drastic difference between the skill levels between Americans and, and Canadians. I mean, it just there just is. I think down south here, it's it's obviously important. I mean, you, from Pee Wee to college, it's it's competitive. Up there, it's I mean, they're playing hockey and ice fishing and stuff, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, so my, most of the time, the field corner for that for the defense is a Canadian guy. And so, I mean, if you can take advantage of it, you take advantage of it. It's just you know, you do whatever you can to to move the ball and be efficient, move the chains, and score points. So personally, do you prefer eleven man? <clears throat> um. I don't know. I, I I I don't know if I can say yet because I haven't experienced the the twelve man style enough. Um, I, I mean, there are things about the American football that I would never change. I mean, I think that the way it's. I mean, I know that now the the zone read and all the all these different offensive schemes are kind of opening the offenses up. But I believe in running the football and throwing the football and keeping defenses on 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 their toes, on their heels, really. And uh, so I don't know. I, I enjoy both of them. Uh, they're, they're different in style and different in, in makeup, but uh, both of them are fun. To, especially as a quarterback, I mean, both of them are going to be fun. And when, you, when you're throwing the ball around and handing the ball off and scoring points, it doesn't really matter how you do it. Just you're glad to be doing it. Can you elaborate on your collegiate awards? Uh, yes, sir. I, uh, <clears throat> I redshirted in 2008 and 2009. I started the, the the year off as the third guy on the on the on the depth chart, which I I knew I knew that wasn't right. I knew I knew that I could play better than the other two guys in front of me, and so for the first five games, I mean I didn't I didn't really sniff the field, and so I remember I remember going to the office coordinator's office and I was like, what do I got to do? Like, tell me what I got to do and I'll do it. And he said, just keep just keep plugging away, just keep plugging away. I was like, well, like, what, what is your plan for me? Like, give me, give me some insight to this, so I know I'm not just gonna beat my head against the wall. And he said, at some point this year, I see you starting. I see you, you know, doing well. If you, if you keep, if you keep at the level you're going, and you keep getting better, I, you're gonna give me no reason to. And then the sixth game of the year, I started, and I started every game since then. And uh, I mean, we, I had some, I had some phenomenal athletes and teammates. I mean, Clyde Gates is a receiver with. The New York Jets right now. Daryl Richardson, my running back, is a running back with the St. Louis Rams. Raymond Radway just signed a, a contract with the Calgary Stampeders in the CFL. He, he was with the Bears for a while. Now he was with the Rams for a while. Uh, T- Tony Washington was my left tackle in 2008, 2009, and he's the starting left tackle for Toronto. Aston Whiteside is, is bounced around the league, and he's going to be one of my teammates in Toronto now as a defensive end. Um, Taylor Gabriel is a guy that he, he just about set every receiving record or he was the top two in every receiving mark list that, at ACU that they have. Uh, Daryl Harkless is a guy that played four years. He's one, of the, he's one of the first guys to run for 2,000 yards in his career, catch for 1,000 yards in his career, and have over 1,000 yards returning in his career. He, he did that over, throughout the, the course of four years and not once did he ever fumble the football. I mean, so I, we had guys that, that I, my job was easy. I mean, get get the ball out of your hands and get it to these guys. Our, our coach, he thought it was funny. 
And so he used to he used to name some of our skilled guys like Big Brown or Sea Biscuit or you know Secretary. Like he used to name after Ray horses, and he says, "Yeah, we got a jackass back there throwing it to you." <laughs> so yeah, he thought it was he, he thought it was pretty funny. But I mean, I and so and then so we finished that year. We went nine and four. Kind of had a rough year. We played three different quarterbacks, like I said, and there's a lot of inconsistencies that that, that were attributed to that. And so in, in the summer of 2009, going into the, the year of 2010, I, uh, I mean, I told myself that I was going to work as hard as I'd ever worked because I'm not going through that season again. I, I, I refuse to do that again because a lot, a lot of the inconsistency, inconsistency that we experienced as a team was because of me and in my play. I mean, if you look at a team and you look at the season, if they, if they have a good season, they probably have good quarterback play. If they don't, if they have an inconsistent season and they're up and down and all around, I mean, they're probably having an inconsistent quarterback play. And so for us, I mean, I, I had no problems raising my hand and saying that I didn't play well enough for us to, to be good. And so I wasn't going to let that happen again. I mean, it, if it was going to come down to skill, that, was, that, that I could handle that. But it wasn't going to be because I wasn't prepared physically, mentally. I mean, it, it, it wasn't going to come down to that. And so in 2010, we had the first undefeated season the AC's ever experienced. We went 11 0, got a first round bye in the playoffs, ended up getting beat 55 41 in the second round of the playoffs by Central Missouri. Um, I was a finalist for the Harlan Hill Award, which is the D2's equivalent of the Heisman. I think they there are seven or nine finalists, and I got fourth. Um, and so that was that was that was a fun experience, and that's just a testament to the guys I had around me. I mean, it really is. Um, and then 2011, going into the 2011 year, I got a, I got some preseason accolades and stuff like that. But we, we had another good year. I think I, th- I threw for like 3,800 yards and 29 touchdowns. Um, we got beat in the first round of the playoffs, 52 to 49. I think we threw the ball for like 560 yards and gave up 800. <laughs> um, and then going into my, going into my last year, we we lost a lot of key guys, uh, not in the skill position, but in the offensive. I think we had three or four new linemen, and so which made me uncomfortable. I mean, just just the the, pre- the constant pressure and then things that that uh, make a quarterback just just uncomfortable and, and out of balance, out of rhythm. Um, I wasn't. I probably wasn't prepared well enough to do. T- I wasn't prepared well enough for that. And uh, we, we struggled a little bit, um, but I was fortunate enough, thankful, you know, for the years that I had before that. I set the Lone Star Conference and the school record for passing yards, completions, um, and attempts. And, and so that, that you know, that's, that's something that's cool because there have been some guys in, in the Lone Star Conference that have thrown for some yards and that had some good success. And uh, to, to just even be considered in the same sentence as some of those guys was pretty special for me. Um, and so that. Uh, and then after after college, you know, I'm, things that have happened to give me this point took place. Are the uh, rules similar to the NFL in protecting the quarterback? From um, not, not. I mean, sometimes, sometimes they are. I mean, sometimes they're not. I mean, it, it's really it just kind of depends on who the guy is. I mean, if it's blatant, obviously yes, they'll throw they'll throw a flag. But they'll let you get roughed up a little bit too. Uh, one of the biggest differences is I f- forgot to mention this: is the receivers they they can they get like eight yard head starts towards the line of scrimmage. I mean they they can start eight yards back, and as soon as I lift my leg up, they start they take off running towards the line of scrimmage, and it just times up. And they I mean they, so they're hitting the line of scrimmage with their full running start, and so the defense is allowed to kind of check them a little bit more than. Than down south, well, I mean, they they can get their hands on them a little more because they're at such a disadvantage with the running. It's called a waggle. They get a waggle. That was one of the biggest adjustments I had, because I, I can understand concepts in football and all right, he's running. Hey, this is his depth, but if this happens, he's doing. I could understand that, but I have three receivers over here, two receivers over here, and then a running back here, and then these two inside guys are coming around here. This guy's coming across here, and then the running back's gonna just run out there all at the snap of the ball. And they're supposed to get to where they're supposed to go. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that was that was one of the biggest adjustments was just just trying to like get my mind and eyes used to seeing you know that that kind of thing. Cause down here you don't ever see anything like that. Are they uh, 
as concerned about uh, concussions in the CFL? Is they, they, in the they, they definitely are. I mean, uh, it, it, is a, it is a very big concern. Um, but there's also, I, I tell people this all the time, there's a big difference between the C and the N in the CFL and the NFL. There's just monetarily. I mean, there, there really is. Um, and so you won't see, like, the big settlements that are going on in the NFL right now with concussions and people who have had symptoms and had to have treatment and stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, they're not, they're not going to be dumb about a guy that is showing symptoms of, of a concussion. And they give you the best, the best gear and the, the best things possible to, to make sure to ensure your safety f- for playing. Thank you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you all.